Today I'm going to be showing you how I built this new dining table for my home. I'm partnering with my friends at DAP Products to show you how I used their Weldwood Original Wood Glue and Tank Bond Clear Epoxy to build this project. I started by milling down 8 quarter rough alder, cutting the pieces into rough lengths, then moving over to my table saw to rip the boards into rough widths. I did it all in rough measurements to allow for additional milling to final sizing. I ran all of the boards through my joiner to flatten one side, then moved them over to my planer to flatten the other side and plane them to an approximate thickness. All of the base components are 3.5 inches square, so I glued the boards together to make up all of the chunky pieces. I used DAP Weldwood Original Wood Glue to glue the boards together. I placed them all together on a set of clamps and clamped them together at once. This saved a ton of time and clamps by doing these all together. For the lower stretcher, I glued it up and clamped it by itself since it's so much longer than the other pieces. When the glue was dry, I released the clamps and ran all of the pieces through the joiner to flatten them up on one side. Once the pieces were finished on the joiner, I set up my planer and ran the other side through to make sure they were all an even thickness, then I planed them down to be three and a half inches. For the upper sections of the legs, I cut a straight edge on each side, then cut a 45 degree cut on each end. There is a half inch lip at the top of each end of the board, so I marked the location with my speed square, then made the cuts on my miter saw. I adjusted my miter saw to cut at a 15 degree angle and cut all of the legs and lower supports to size. The legs are cut at 15 degree parallel angles and the lower supports are cut at 15 degrees perpendicular. The lower supports are notched out in the middle to hold the bottom stretcher. I marked out where the notch would go and then ran the section through my table saw multiple times using my miter gauge and cross cut sled to guide the wood. When the curved cuts were finished, I removed the excess wood and then used my chisel and sandpaper to clean up the notches. The lumber I purchased was clear alder, but that didn't mean that there weren't a few small knots that needed to be filled. I mixed up some DAP Tank Bond Clear Epoxy to help with this. I love using this for small knots like this because it dries so quickly and saves me a ton of time. I was able to get back to work on these legs within an hour once the epoxy had fully cured and could be sanded. To assemble each side of the base, I laid out my pieces and then measured and marked where all of the domino mortises would go on each side of the boards. I routed out the mortises, adding a tight mortise to one part of the joint, and the other piece has a loose mortise to allow for ease of alignment when piecing the boards together. I then added the domino tenons to dry fit all of the pieces together. I wanted to make sure everything fit as exactly as it should before I added glue and made everything permanent, or at least really difficult to fix. I did a little finish sanding to the areas that would be difficult to sand once the bases were assembled, then I grabbed my wood glue and glued tenons into place. I added glue to the mortises on the other boards as well, and then a little glue where the wood faces would meet up. Then I fit the pieces together. I checked with my Multimark ruler to make sure that all of the pieces were where they should be, and then clamped the boards together. I grabbed a few of the 15 degree cutoffs to make the clamping area square, and then I added my clamp.
Next, I glued the tenons into the tops of the legs and then added the upper support and clamped that together and set everything aside to dry. I got to work prepping the tabletop for glue by running the edges through the joiner to make sure that they were all nice and flat. I had also already flattened and planed them to uniform thickness prior to this. I used a square to mark where all of the domino mortises would be routed on each of the boards, then grabbed my domino to make the mortises. I assembled the tabletop board by board, gluing the tenons into one side and then adding glue to the entire edge of the other board and piecing them together. I kept this process going board by board until the last board was ready to be added. By this time I had put clamps under the pieces so that I could clamp it all together once the final board was added. I added three clamps to the underside of the tabletop and also added additional clamps on top. Unfortunately, my camera card had run out of memory by the time I got to that step, so you'll just have to imagine the clamps there. Once the tabletop was dry, I squared up each end with my track saw, cutting it down to its final length. To add the breadboard ends, I held the boards up to the end of the table and marked where the domino mortises would be routed. On the breadboards, the middle mortise will be tight and the remaining mortises will be loose. This will allow for wood movement as the table adjusts to the ambient humidity. All of the mortises on the main portion of the table will be tight mortises. I glued all of the tenons in place and then wiped away any excess glue with a towel. I measured the halfway point on each of the tenons and then marked that location over the two end mortises on each side of the breadboards. I added glue to the three middle tenons and then fit the breadboards onto the table. The two tenons on each end will have dowels holding them in, which will allow for some wood movement. I measured and marked how deep the dowels will go with tape on my drill bit. I drilled quarter inch holes into the two tenons on each end of the breadboards and then added quarter inch dowels. To hold the dowels in place, I added glue for the final half inch. I wiped away the excess glue and then saw cut them flush with the tabletop. I built the tabletop slightly wider than the finished dimensions. This way I could cut it to the exact size that I wanted and keep the breadboard ends flush with the sides of the table. Before assembling the table base, I wanted to route grooves for the Z-clips that I would be using to attach the tabletop. I fit my domino with the smallest bit and marked out the location where the grooves would go with a pencil. I routed the grooves on both the upper stretchers and the tops of the base pieces. Once that was finished, I put the larger bit back into the domino and routed out the mortises for the stretchers to fit into the base pieces. I glued the domino tenons into each end of the stretchers, then glued them to each end of the base, clamping them together with bar clamps. With an extra set of hands, I flipped the base over and onto the ground, readjusting the bar clamps to hold the top together while the glue joints dried. 
I added glue to the notched out areas and then put the lower stretcher in place, measuring and adjusting it so that there would be a one inch overhang on each side. The stretcher was a tight fit, so I used a rubber mallet to knock it into place, then clamped it while the glue dried. Once the base was dry, I gave all of the table components a final finish sanding with 220 grit sandpaper, then applied multiple coats of wipe on polyurethane. I sanded in between each coat with 220 grit sandpaper and added five coats of poly to give the table a good layer of protection. Once it was all dry, we moved the pieces into the house and I attached the table top with Z-clips. I'm so excited to have this new dining table in our house and I know that we're going to enjoy it for many years to come. Special thanks to DAP Products for partnering with me on this video. For more content just like this one, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.